I think everybody is going to support you. Can we get a hip hip hooray hip, before hip, we hooray. go? That was terrible. Like a hip hip hooray. Come on, something. Hip hip hooray. And a hip hip hooray to all you guys back in Connecticut. And if you were hoping to get one of Connecticut's first glasses of aged whiskey, good luck. Because there are just a couple places where you can get a glass. And it may surprise you to know that crickets are actually a very nutritional food source with nearly as much protein per ounce as chicken, fish, or even beef. That's some good cricket. The flowers, the food, and the tea, and this bad boy, yep. which is called the Gracie. A wonderful game called Gracie's, and, and that's that's kind of how you play it. Kind of how you play it. You it's play. all it's all in how you flick that's the right. wrist. There's, though. there's great technique involved in that. Yep. And Josh, I hope you're able to get a little taste of the action. Looks like you are. Keith and Ann, I know that pizza is a big deal in New Haven, but let me tell you something. Middletown, we're kind of known for our pizza pie, too, because this is home where they have a little competition called Pizza War. Six different restaurants get together every year. They assemble at St. of Assisi's Church, and they have a great, great time to find out who's got the best pie in the entire world. Our place, great job, by the way. Excellent stuff, excellent stuff. And all of this is going to a very good cause. All right, everyone's leaving me hanging at the Vinci Pizza. That's okay. We're not going to vote for them. Here's how it works. So six different restaurants compete against one another. You come vote for your favorite, and all the money that's raised is going to be going over to St. Vincent de Paul. They have a goal right now of raising some $3,500, or to put it another way, around 6,000 meals to help feed the 35% food insecure folks or so. All right, my friend, what is your trick to finding the best pizza in Middletown? Um, I don't know. He doesn't know, but Keith had a favor. He said he wanted a pizza, my friends. Oh, you just enjoy that. For now, we're live in Middletown. Josh Scheinbloom, News 8. Would you guys be interested in having cookies? When a chef has to convince you to eat their food, they're free. It's usually not a good sign. It's healthier for you. At Quinnipiac University, however, that's exactly what's happening. Delicious, right? Right. Very good. Good. Inside their student center sits plates of cookies and chips with salsa. I'm internally debating. In a group of students all too eager to watch you munch on them. Just take a bite. Let's just say there's more to these chocolate chips than meets the eye. Do you want a cookie? Did you try one? No, I didn't. I'm too afraid. And those are not black beans. What's stopping you from trying it right now? Because I really hate bugs. Well, cricket specifically. Oh, I got one. You got one? There he is. That's a cricket. <gasps> Whoa! Right. And it may surprise you to know that crickets are actually a very nutritional food source with nearly as much protein per ounce as chicken, fish, or even beef. That's some good cricket. It's really good. Yeah. Good job, guys. What you see is all part of an effort to raise awareness. So we have people kind of giving info behind the table. And promote what some call sustainability. There's a whole movement on eating insects. But whatever your view on crickets <laughs> as a food source. It's okay. You got this. Your mind can apparently be easily changed. All I taste is the chocolate, so that's good. You just have to first put them in your mouth. Yeah! yeah. In Hamden, Josh Scheibler. You ready to try a cookie? News 8. I hope you guys had dinner before you watch what we're about to show you here. Let me tell you something. We are all aboard a little truck called the Gourmet Lady. It's one of over a dozen different food trucks that have descended upon South Main Street in Cheshire on the support a very good cause. Now, before we tell you about that good cause, I want to introduce you to Lois. Okay, Lois, what are people going to be expecting when they come on something with as delicious and tantalizing as the name is the Gourmet Lady? Down home southern cooking. Potato salad, sweet potato pie, hush puppies, the only best ones in the north. Okay, pulled pork, beef brisket, but pulled pork North Carolina style. Lois, I think you're going to make all of our mouths water, so I'm going to try to get off of your vehicle here. Now, Lois was talking about all that delicious food, and what if I was to tell you that you could eat that stuff and also support a local swim team? We're talking about the YMCA Sea Dogs, and that's what's really brought out all of these people here. You come by, you get some dinner, and a portion of those proceeds are going to go help the Sea Dogs team make their way on out to Indianapolis, Indiana, where they're going to be competing for the championships of the YMCA swim team. And I see a lot of people here running around. Let's see if we can talk to one real quick. How are you doing? What's your name? Amy. 
And Amy, what has been your favorite part about the food truck experience so far? Well, I haven't really gotten to explore them all yet, but uh, I'm looking right, well, forward well, to. Well, listen, we get we got we, there's, we got the people of Connecticut at home. They're watching. They're looking for some possible prospects. Walk me through this. What are you kind of thinking about? What are we looking for in a good food truck? Oh, I'm thinking maybe um, a nice wrap or some French fries or uh, the dessert trucks look pretty good. Well, lucky for you, you've got all those options and more. And just before we send you away, I got another guy running away. Why do they always run away from me? I don't know. This is this is Josh. He is with the Sea Dogs uh, Swim Club. Now, I understand you have all 42 of your swimmers out here volunteering. We have 42 kids going to nationals in Indianapolis in two weeks. We're really, really excited. It's going to be a great time, and we'd love it if all of you guys could come out here to support us. This event is also a fundraiser for our team so that we can help defray some of the costs of that trip. All right, now I think everybody is going to support you. Can we get a hip hip hooray hip, before hip, we hooray. go? That was terrible. Like a hip hip hooray. Come on, something. Hip hip hooray. And a hip hip parade to all you guys back in Connecticut for now. We are live in Cheshire, Josh Scheinblum. Like a blade cutting through a sheet of white paper. It's just like a perfect, is it? Perfect path. A small Coast Guard tugboat embarks on a mission along the Connecticut River. This is a work hog, huh? Its goal is big to free ice that's jammed along the waterway. The big white, white, white spot open over there, you see it? This won't be an easy job. Come on, old girl. Because today, temperatures are below freezing. I left my house at three degrees. And the ice is thick. That's where I pushed up yesterday, got stuck, remember that? In the Coast Guard, a vessel like this is called a cutter. And it's a boat that is certainly designed for the job that it has at hand. Here in the Connecticut River, the ice can be up to 10 inches thick, and it's plowing through it, no problem. Senior Chief Bosun's mate, Aaron Brewer, is overseeing operations. He's one of six seamen on board. We started right before the holidays. It froze up a little bit, broke that. And then uh, during the holidays, it uh, began to freeze again. It's a tedious process. It was fun for the first 20 minutes, but it was, you know, when, I, when we first started doing it. And then after that, it got kind of monotonous. Crush ice in one area so it can move to another. Start up north, break it, and then we'll have to go back down to continue to break it. Otherwise, we're just going to back it up right here. Often only to get stuck again. It freezes right back up. But Brewer says he and his crew feel a sense of duty doing this type of work because New England depends on it. We have potential with all these homes along the shoreline of flooding, uh, as well as uh, you know, coal barges and um, heating oil that transits up and down the uh, Connecticut River. They wouldn't uh, otherwise have access to the Connecticut River if we weren't breaking the ice to keep it free. Cutting ice to keep people safe and preserve a way of life. This is a very important aspect of what the Coast Guard does. In Middletown, Josh Scheinblum, New Zealand.